In this problem, we are told that at t is equal to negative 2 milliseconds, our sinusoidal voltage is 0 and going positive. And we are also given a hint where we need to represent our waveform as a sine and not cosine form because it is easier for this circumstance. We are also told that the voltage is next 0 at t is equal to 8 milliseconds. And then we are also given that our voltage is 80.9 volts at t is equal to 0. So first we're going to graph the first part of this. Our graph will look something like this. We know we start at a negative two and this is in milliseconds and our next zero is at t is equal to eight milliseconds. So it's going to be right here. So we're using a sign to represent this. It's going to start here and go up like this. This is half a period. For it to be a full period, it needs to have one point where it hits the x axis or the time axis, another point where it hits the time axis, and then a third point where it hits the time axis. So somewhere over here, it's going to hit it again, and that is going to be our period, this entire length. Well, we know from negative 2 to 8 that it is 10, so if we multiply this twice, because the period is 2 times half the period, we're going to get 20. So t is equal to 20. This is our period, 20 milliseconds. Now to find our frequency, we can actually look in the notes linked below the like button in the description and find that our frequency is equal to 1 divided by our period. And our period is 20. Remember, this is in milliseconds. We haven't converted it yet. So it's going to be 1 divided by 20 times 10 to the negative 3. And we can plug this into a calculator. And this is going to give us the answer of 50 hertz. Next, we're going to look at the omega. This can also be found in the notes linked in the description, but the formula for our omega is that we have a 2 pi times our frequency. We found our frequency to be 50 hertz, so we are just going to plug in 50 hertz for our frequency, and that's going to give us 100 times pi. And this will give us approximately 314 radians per second for our omega. Now we need to find the phase angle. To do this, we are going to use a formula that is also, again, linked in the notes. And that formula is going to look something like this. We have our voltage is equal to our Vmax, and then the cosine omega t plus theta. Make sure, for from now on, we are using the cosine, because we want to solve in the cosine form expression. So in writing this, we are going to use the negative 2 milliseconds, because we know that our voltage is going to be zero and going positive at this time. However, we know this for our sine. This negative two milliseconds is measured in our sine. So we are actually going to replace this with a sine, and then we are going to come back and convert this sine back to cosine. Our V, again, we know to be zero because the voltage at negative two milliseconds is zero. So we're going to plug this in. We're going to set this equal to our Vm, and then we have the sine, remember, because right now we're solving for sine, and then we'll convert it to cosine afterwards. And then we have our omega, which we found to be approximately 314, and then our time, which is negative 2 milliseconds, and we're going to convert this, so we need our milli to be 10 to the negative cubed, plus our phase angle. However, we don't know what our phase angle is yet, so we're just going to write this like this. We can divide both sides by Vm right here, that way it will cancel out. And then we are going to multiply both sides by arc sine. Remember when we plug this into our calculator, it is going to be in radians, and this is going to give us zero. So we're going to have a zero is equal to our omega times t plus our phase angle. Now we can move our omega and t to the left side, that way we get our phase angle by itself. And then if we do that, and then multiply everything together, and then from this we are going to get that our phase angle is equal to approximately 0.628. Now this is in radians, we don't have a degrees here, but we want to convert this to degrees. To convert something to degrees we need to multiply it by 180 and then divide it by pi. That way the radians can cancel out and then we are left with degrees. And then if we do this we are going to get approximately 36 degrees. Now remember that this is solved for sine. We want it in our cosine expression. And we know that our cosine lags behind our sine by 90 degrees. So when we plug this back into for the cosine, we are going to have a cosine negative 90 degrees plus our sine angle, which is 36 degrees. And then this is going to give us the angle of negative 54 degrees. 
So that is the answer for our phase angle. Next, we are going to solve for the maximum voltage. For our maximum voltage, we are going to use the same formula right here. However, it's actually going to be the sign. So we are actually going to be using this formula right here. We know that our voltage is 80.9 volts at T is equal to zero. So we're going to have our 80.9 set equal to our Vmax. And then we will have our cosine here with zero inside of here because our T is zero. So that's going to make our omega zero plus our angle. Since we are using the cosine, we are using the cosine angle which is a negative 54 degrees. If we were using sine, so if this cosine right here was replaced with a sine, we would be using the angle that we found for sine, which is this 36 degrees. Now, when we plug this into a calculator, we are going to have 80.9 divided by our cosine of negative 54 degrees. Make sure the calculator is in degrees, and this will give us approximately 138 volts. And that is how you would go about solving for this problem.